we're going to be learning about ammeters and voltmeters. These are two useful devices that can be used to measure the current or the voltage through a particular resistor. Now, as you can imagine, being able to measure voltage and current is very, very useful. It's particularly useful in science experiments as well. So you'll be seeing lots of these devices. We have to be careful though, not to disturb the circuit when we're trying to measure it. If we put a measuring device into a circuit and it changes the circuit, then we're not really measuring the original circuit, are we? So if we, what, if we affect the way the current flows through the electric circuit, then we're not measuring the circuit that we want to measure. So uh, a device like this is called an ammeter. It's often marked with an A for ammeter, right? So this is a device that measures electric current. That is the rate of charge flowing through something. So if it's going to experience the same current as a given resistor, then it needs to be connected in series with that resistor, right? So connect it up like a link in a chain. If it is wired in series with the resistor, how do we prevent it from altering the circuit? We know that sometimes when we put a resistor in series with another resistor, it decreases the current flowing through the circuit because there's more resistance and that means less current. So if the ammeter is not going to affect the current, what will its resistance be? Well, if it has no impact on the resistance, then the voltage drop across the ammeter must be very small. And this means that the resistance is going to be very small as well. Remember, voltage drop, V equals IR, is proportional to R. So if the resistance of the ammeter is very, very small, then the voltage drop and the effect that it has on the current will also be very small. We can often use the approximation, the resistance of an ammeter equals zero. Of course, this isn't quite the case because even electric wires, which we also assume to have resistance of zero, do in fact have resistance when they get long enough. So although this approximation is only that, an approximation, it's often a good enough approximation that we can use it in equations. So the ammeter doesn't actually measure the current through a particular thing. It measures only the current flowing through the ammeter itself. And so if it's connected in series with the resistor, then that means that the current through the ammeter will be equal to the current through the resistor. So when the ammeter measures the, its own current, we'll also know the resistor's current. So this is why we connect the ammeter in series with the resistor that we want to measure. Makes sense, right? All right, now to something a bit different. This device is called a voltmeter. This particular voltmeter looks pretty similar to the ammeter we saw before. You can see that it's marked with a V for voltmeter. So a voltmeter is a device that measures the voltage between two different points and an, on an electrical circuit. We've learned that different points on an electrical circuit can have a different electric potential. And so a voltmeter will measure the potential difference or the voltage between those two points of different electrical potential. To experience exactly the same voltage drop as the resistor that it's measuring, it needs to be wired in parallel with the resistor. We've learned before that the voltage across two resistors in parallel is going to be equal. But remember, we need to do this without affecting the circuit. If we connect a voltmeter in parallel to another resistor, and it changes the way that current flows through the circuit, then we may as well be measuring a different circuit altogether. Now the branch of the circuit that contains the voltmeter has to draw almost no current, otherwise we'll be changing the current through, and hence voltage across the resistor that we're measuring. So if this is the case, if the branch with the voltmeter in it does not draw any current, then it must have a very, very high resistance because the amount of current that it draws is inversely proportional to the resistance. If the resistance of the voltmeter is very high, then the electrical current through it will be very low. And so this means that occasionally we use this approximation here. The resistance of a voltmeter is infinite. Current cannot flow through it. Now, obviously in real life, this is not the case. Nothing can have an infinite resistance to the flow of electric current. 
However, this is often a good enough approximation that we can use it in equations. And so we do. Now, like an ammeter measuring the current through itself, the voltmeter also measures the voltage drop across itself. It can't look at something remotely. It can only look at the potential across its own terminals and say, this is what the voltage is. So if the voltmeter is connected in parallel with the resistor, it just so happens that the voltage drop across that resistor will be the same as the voltage drop across the voltmeter. So when the voltmeter measures the potential difference between its own two terminals, it will also tell us the voltage across the resistor that it is measuring. And that, of course, is why we connect the voltmeter in parallel with the resistor that we want to measure. So that's the end of the theory. We've learned a bit about ammeters and voltmeters, how to connect them in, uh, into a circuit, and what they measure.